Nyx, two common faces, common occurrences so far. Are they allowed to eat in the booth? I was talking about the, the, the crowd. The crowd have their snacks, oh. the players have their heroes. It was kind of something I was going for, it wasn't great. Oh, I thought you said the players had snacks, like a little juice uh, box. A little dude, I think, I think you should totally be allowed that, you know, like a cheeky skittle when you, when you get a creep kill or something, or any other sweet. So those, cheese, those cheese crackers with mm. peanut, butter, peanut butter in the middle? What, what's your go-to <laughs> gaming snack, Pia? Ooh, gaming snack? I'm converted to like nuts, unsalted nuts, cheeky handful of almonds. Uh, unsalted, wow, you're so health conscious, man. That's you right. Could barely, you could barely walk here. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of salt when I'm playing Dota, so. Absolutely. I know what that lies Ooh. about. Ooh, so Ogre Magi. Solo Ogre Magi. Mm -hmm. He's back. Yeah, this is one of Solo's best heroes. It really just shows how skilled of a player he is. Because. Hmm. Mm. Mm. And no cover. I was about to try and go, really? So, Tell me why. Yeah, that was a little passive aggressive. But no, Solo is Solo's an awesome player. Sure. Just Ogre is not a hero that takes a lot of skill to play. Mm. Although Solo plays it differently. He walks around with like three to four salves at a time, and he's just uh, he's a mobile fountain for his teammates. Maybe a branch. Yeah, he doesn't need, like Ogre has a ton of base regen. He only needs maybe like a clarity, a branch. I don't know. That's That seems a little, a little too much. Yeah. Maybe a smoke, yeah. go for a courier or something in the early game. But you just get level seven, you max bloodlust, and you just buff your teammates yeah. the rest of the game. So is that sense? So is Solo going to be spending the majority of this game just being a bloodlust vendor? Yes. Yeah. So basically, how VP plays Ogre um, is usually phased around mid lane. Like they usually play dual lane mid with. They used to do sniper. I don't know if sniper is a hero these days, but uh, they always sniper void. Sniper void. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? We might see a sniper. Who knows? Sniper's okay versus Coddle, I think. But Ogre is very good with the Void here. <coughs> We've been talking about that the Void really lacks damage before, and uh, now he actually gets the Blood Loss, so he gets the extra damage in the Chrono. Now, I know Jack isn't here, but I have got some uh, kind of Chinese Dota info Ten for you. LGD and oh, all Chinese teams refer to the uh, Ogre Magi as Blue Fat. That's how it translates. Blue oh, Fat. Hmm. They've drafted Blue Fat. I guess we're not doing Jack's corner for this segment, are we? Um, I could go for a run, but we saw what happened last time. We should just bring, <laughs> <laughs> we should just bring Jack Scorner back for the uh, non-China games. I think it should be. Like I a think should, he's fantastic, dude. I'm, a, I'm only there to kind of say go and stop. He's just, he's fantastic. You had your, you had your own flavor to it. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's have a look then. Cottle and Nix. We haven't dude. seen a lot of Nix assassin. It's actually been kind of passed up a little bit more than I thought it would. And the same question I was thinking. When it has been picked, it's been doing very well. That was day nine is just beside himself about the 80% win rate of Nix assassin. He brings it up every single break. Yeah, it's been done as well a lot of games against teams that usually picks him, or if it's teams that wants to pick this uh, puck or cop mid, then they they uh, ban the Nix so he can't come there to just mana burn them. Yeah, the level one, the level one mana burn in mid acting as like kind of how we'll probably see Solo play this game. It's actually very smart. It's a way to make yourself uh, useful early on without. Yeah, that's where Nick struggles the most, especially as a support. It's, you know, what does he do from levels one to six? Yeah. So big question now. We haven't actually talked about the bans too much, but if you look at that most recent ban from LGD, is that just pure respect to Lil? Ten um, is that guess. Enchantress? Am I making that? Are my eyes deceiving me? So it could be, it, it could be a little, it's probably a little bit of both, as is most everything in Dota. Yeah. A lot of different variables and moving pieces you got to look out for. But what it kind of tells to me is that they might you want the Nyx and Coddle to be their support duo. Okay. And neither of these heroes can deal with an Enchantress creep roaming into a lane. So you ban out that Ench and you don't have to worry about that and you can still use these two heroes as your supports and pick up your three cores with your last three picks. And have VP have struck the fear of God into them from the previous... Have, have, uh, have VP played offlane Ench or was it only EG? That was. I think it's only EG that has played offlane Ench. Okay. That being said, I think they have played it before, just not at this tournament. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't put it past them. They're, they're one of the most versatile teams when it comes to hero pool. By the way, Keeper of the Light is not really picked up much either. It's pretty much only Liquid who plays it, right? And uh, this yeah. is pretty interesting that they choose to choose, like, choose it in first two. Um, kind of out of nowhere here. I mean, we've seen what GH can do with it, right? Okay, I mean, we've seen the impact a, a Kotal can have. Is it, it just can be a, very is it a unique part. case? It's more about the team as well, that the team plays very good around it. They let the uh, uh, GH get the space as well, because w without farm, Kotal is not that good, so... I like it against Void. It's, you know, blind, especially mm -hmm. like Void Ogre. You, you see, we talk about Bloodlust being, sure. you know, increasing attack speed and allowing teams to do more physical damage. Blinding Light's gonna be great for that, because no matter how fast you're attacking, you're gonna be missing a bunch with that Blinding Light. And you can also use some elements of Split Push with Caudal, which is great to avoid team fights and find the right team fights when you're up against a Void who has this 
Chronosphere, which is a huge team fight. Void's also a hero that can't really kill creeps that easily. Yeah. Like, he's right clicking creeps down, whereas Carl just kind of blasts them away. So, yeah. If, yeah. You can get, if you can get Void to show in lane, you'll know exactly where he is. Mm -hmm. and you can either gank him or stay away from him. And I'm sure you've been asked this question a thousand times, but oh, wow. oh, never mind. Change of ch change of plan, change of topic. Chen shows his face. Is that the second Chen pick? I think he was picked once during the group session, then yeah. he lost. Yeah, definitely. So a zero percent win rate. A VP is a team that's been playing good with Chen before, so that's a. So you're, you're a Chen player. I'm a much more mediocre Chen player. I mean, right oh. now it's kind of the same thing as Eng, uh, like they banned it. They have Colin and then uh, Nyx probably has uh, supports. So then, in uh, that sense, Chen is very good against these heroes. So you, I would, yeah, I agree. I think Chen is going to have a great laning phase. But up, you know, picking Chen into Caudal and Earthshaker, that's that's kind of scary. Isn't it? I think it's more that you just have to make sure that that you don't just push uh, blindly into the tower to make them being able to nuke down the creeps. You have to go around the towers to find uh, pickoffs or kills before. So Chen works really well with Zanking as well, because we're probably going to see Zen, uh, the Chen run to the Zanking, and Zanking is going to kill his Caustic and push in the lane constantly, and they're going to be able to dive and yeah. apply a lot of pressure. And they don't really need to help out the Void that much. Maybe Ogre is going to start there, give him a head start against Shaker, and then start running between mid and uh, and yeah, the safe lane. They're so going to collapse. How do you? How would you suggest LGD deal with a lane that's being constantly pushed by Zanking and then having Chen creeps diving? Um. Oof. It's always a bit tricky, I think, but I would suggest you start there with uh, with your two supports and you shut down the sanking so he can't actually push in the lane in okay. the beginning. And then when Chen comes, you start pushing out the wave. Um, your carry could also be pretty important here. Like, you, maybe you want a ranged guy that you can eventually leave alone, maybe a Necrophos again, maybe a Weaver. Something to stay off the melee creeps. Kind of, yes. Something that will, will be hard to kill for the Chen sanking. Um, and then probably end up having a uh, like a true carry from mid lane, like your actual win condition. Ooh, Lesh Rack. That's a core Lesh. Is that a, that's a maybe Lesh, right? Or is it a... Like a mid Lesh? Um, I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that here would definitely struggle with the Chen Sand King lane. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I think it's going to be easier for them to protect him mid than it is to protect him in the, in the safe lane Certainly. because of the Sand King. So. Especially with Nyx kind of floating around mid and backing him up. Uh, one thing that I would suggest for LGD is, you know, starting with the supports in the safe lane to help with the sanking. Caudal can just blast the wave mm -hmm. over and over and keep that wave pushed out. Yeah. So as long as, you know, sank like sanking is going to get his farm for sure, but you're not at risk of dying to the Chen, and that's like the big weakness in LGD's draft right now is their supports aren't capable of dealing with that Chen creep. Mm -hmm. So they so just need to eliminate any opportunities for Lil to set up those early game ganks. And then yeah. as the game progresses, and they get levels and they start getting items, I think Chen will start to fall off. I, I agree. I also think the, the is issue with Chen in general is that he comes with his creep and then you kind of just run away from that creep and then he sits there. He takes and he takes advantage he, of that. He, yeah, he kind of just sits there and he doesn't really achieve anything. He doesn't get any experience. So when he starts oh, sure. attacking a, a creep, like if he starts farming jungle, then you can contest him. And he's kind of like, yeah. he doesn't sure. really have a catch. He's like, he's hard to pull off, I think, these days. Um, but and, and okay, they're, it's attacking, like so they're attacking a hero you, you know and love. What's happening here? Defend him. Well, there is a reason why I, I haven't played it in a long time as well. And okay. I actually love the hero, but I feel he's a bit too weak. And it's mostly because of the ultimate right now as well, that it's been nerfed a lot. So it's 160 or 180 seconds on the first level. Of 160. Yeah, it's, it's super. It's really and then bad. it's like too long. Yeah, it's yeah. way, to way too long. Anymore. You might not even want to scale it, to be honest. I don't even know <laughs> if it's worth it. Probably. But um, So what rounds this out, then? What's the cherry on top of this, uh, well, high Maybe, maybe we're going to see Sniper, actually. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad. No sure. one here. I like it. Sniper up against Troll. Yeah. Stay far away. It's pretty good against Lushrak, too. That, that headshot um, interaction like really messes him up. Those little mini stuns. Or, uh, they don't actually stun right now. They just kind of... What are they like? It's like slow 100%. A, or a something? dazed effect? Is that what yeah. you call it? They just slow 100%, I think. They just, yeah. 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 So you can still move, you can still cast, you can't move. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a Venom. All right. Or the Venomancer. It's going to be a right click Venomancer for sure. That's also a pretty good pick, I'd say. I like it. Lots yeah. of vision. Last track has a, you know, he's pretty immobile, especially when he wants to be running around on top of you with his two AoE ground spells. And you will not be able to do that with Venom Guys, I'm hearing vibes from you that you thinking we might be seeing Vantus Pro continue on the main stage. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Positivity then surrounding Virtus Pro, at least here outside Seattle. It's beautiful. Sun is rising even further into the sky, and we're having a fantastic time here. I don't quite understand how the sun works. Let's go head over to your casters, though, and we'll jump into another game of the Dotes. Lumi in game one, our panel didn't believe in the Crystal Maiden, didn't stop VP then. Now they pick Chen. Some questions, some heads being scratched. Will it stop them this time? These guys are the masters of the hero challenge. They seem to win with everything. They did it at the summit. They're busting out not quite different picks every single game, but they're certainly not afraid to pull something out of their back pocket. What do you think, Chet? It's different heroes, but it's same play style. They're going to go at you fast and hard. And I think that's going to be the name of the game, right? Chen, something that the panel touched on, on is the fact that you can grab a creep and just send it to heroes like Keeper of the Light, Nyx Assassin. What are they going to do when there's a Centaur running at you? Let's not forget that Lashrak mid is going to be maybe hero, and he's normally very good on the hero, but what does he do when a Centaur runs behind him and set up gank? I, I feel like this Chen, even though perhaps it's not the best hero in the current meta, very, very good in this game. Could be the dream game for 11, though. <laughs> it's, uh, it's already, you know, three melee heroes. You've got the Chen army as well, so Echo Slams of plenty could abound if he can get a good start. Uh, we, we did see an Earthshaker go off yesterday and just dominate from the off lane for XXS, but that was against an Ember Spirit. This time, going to be facing up against a Void and an Ogre, both of whom are a lot better at trading blows with the Shaker early. So unless he gets help, I'm not sure he's going to have that explosive start. And it looks like he's going to get scouted by warding into the enemy jungle as well. So too will the Donkey. Always, always a risky business type of game when you're up against Lil and your courier. Though, I'm not sure if we'll see him try to snipe it as the Chen more commonly on some of his other more traditional roaming supports, the melee bruisers. Forgive me as I talk a little bit about the Somnus or maybe Lashrak. They have played it three times in the group stage, 100% win rate on the hero. Here's the thing, they always play it with a save. Twice with the Oracle, one time with the Chronosphere on his ally. And the idea is to sort of allow maybe to just go in and just not worry and just dish out as much damage as possible. Always goes for the Bloodstone first to extend his damage and as well survivability. This game though, not only does he have to deal with an early game Chen Roams, but also a ton of burst damage coming out from Virtus Pro. It's definitely one of their comfort heroes, I just don't know whether this is the game to do it. And we're going to see the Venomancer plop down in mid. So normally when the Venos run nowadays, it's as a core and as a safe lane core. Probably Artesian EG, the player that most fans are familiar with running the hero, but they're going to mix it up. They're going to put him against the Lash, so it is a 2v2 showdown here, at least early. A VP already applying pressure top. They're going to make the move here on the Keeper of Light, trying to punish him out. He doesn't have the extra moves, but he could be in danger. One more through. No attack. Treats it up. Treats. They Not like Trey this. Yao. Oh, Yao is not going to be happy with them. I'll tell you that one. Well, I'm good to talk to your teammates, but the creeps don't respond well. Back in the mid lane, Venomous Gales flies through against maybe. He's taking a ton of damage. Very low base armor all around. Because we're going to work under the tower, but it's not going to be enough. Deny coming out from Victoria. Still a win here for VP, but not getting the, the experience from that kill. Yeah, good save there, but it shows you a weakness of the Lash. He is extremely squishy. And Nyx did not have a point in the stun. He went for the mana burn early just to harass, and as a result, had no way to blunt that VP aggression. So great shot falling, identifying that there was an opening where normally, you know, if a Nyx had saved the skill point or potentially just grabbed the stun, there wouldn't be. The silver lining out here for LGD is the fact that the Shaker is getting a 1v1 matchup. Like you mentioned, Void is still going to win that matchup, just trades better. But, you know, as an offlane Shaker, all you care about is, you know, couple of last hits. If not win it, yeah, at least shouldn't lose it as bad as ever. Right. Because, so. you know, you get hit by the Enchant Totem, you can time walk off some of the damage. Uh, you have, you know, you're just better at trading in general as well with the bash. Yep. Notice that he doesn't have a single point of fissure just yet. Just using Enchant Totem early on just gives you so much more of an edge. If it's a true 1v1, then you could just kind of last it and deny. Well, they'll need him to come up big because the rest of the lanes are struggling. The first blood happening early top. Ame, only 6-2 and two here, not exactly farming up a storm. So at the same time, Ramsey's not doing particularly well, but uh, of course Ame is getting help, whereas, at least for now, uh, looks like Ramsey's has lost his. VP are just going to stick in the, the 2v2 setup top. Wonder if the Chen is going to make a move at some point. Like, do you see Lil leaving this top lane, or 
you just keep on constantly pressuring the Keeper of the Light early. It's If he's leaving the top lane, he's probably going to go mid for a gank, but I think if he's, you know, calling a place home, it's probably going to top be the top lane for now. You have a very easy camp to access any big creeps you might need, and you're putting a ton of pressure on this Troll Warlord as well as the Keeper of the Light. Trading the experience, at least for now, with Pasha. Not farming the jungle, just constantly parked and showing himself top. Seems they're content with slowing Ame down, uh, as opposed to worrying too much about trying to get the kills. No one continues to hold mid. Already 17 CS for him, and now we will see the move. Solo's gonna at least initially rotate off of the lane, perhaps considers a, a different setup here. And Eleven might be the hero that he looks to zone out. Now the Earthshaker could be in trouble as Solo comes in. He's gonna start things off with the Ignite. They use the stun. If they get a single bash, Eleven actually no TP. They don't need to hold any stuns. They might be able to kill him off here. The time walk's still on cooldown for five seconds time. He does have the boots advantage and reigns around the trees. Not often you see a shaker oh. but somehow the stretch arm strong stun. Time walking forward, they're gonna need that bash to get this kill. Eleven keeps on juking, but Ramsey's cutting oh, hold the bash. Finally gets it and drills him. Did not think he would be in range there for the fire blast, but just barely clipped him. I wonder if he would have survived if he just like walked straight home, you know? Like he did do a, quite a bit of jukes in the jungle, although... I, I think probably, yeah. I mean, Ramsey was doing a very excellent job, like body blocking as he's hitting, walking in front of him, so it would have been tough either way. Good gank here from uh, Solo. And he takes the, uh, away the rune as well, so very good. His friend grabbed, and you know, something you touched on, these melee bruisers, generally the the main hero's snagging runes, and Solo has been doing that. Grabs the haze, he's grabbed two bounties. Also fighting the kills, he got a double damage rune earlier, so constantly pressuring them is... Oh, see they're Lil gonna gank Lil in the jungle. Taking over this LGD jungle, but it might be an overextension by him. The double stun comes through. Lil does not have a TP scroll either, so maybe running him down. The Edict works its magic, and LGD get back on the board. Finally getting a kill here. I'm trying to turn these lanes around. Very good ward to actually scout out the rotations of your jungle. Normally, you don't put this, uh, the other one, uh, deeper into the jungle. Because, you know, Chen is going to be taking that path a lot of times, and uh, they're actually going to be able to pick, uh, pick up a kill. So, early you were comparing the Venomancer to something that, you know, EG has been playing a lot, but the mid Veno builds it quite differently. Max is the Gale here as you fire off, and there's just so much harass coming in. But looks like the harass will get turned the other direction as the Nyx Assassin rotates in. Yeah, not a single point in the Plague Wards yet. Yep. This is a kill build, you know, you, you just, you go Gale, you get your ult at 6, and then you, once you land the Gale, you're just gonna get a kill. You, so much right-click damage with the Poison Sting as well. But immediate smoke from LGD from the mid lane after shrining up, I think they're baiting them in, or perhaps just a bad smoke, it seems. Looks like no one is rushing the Midas here. Already grabbed the Gloves of Haze, so let's to play a bit more of a proper carry Venno. Is, as you mentioned, really just trying to be the, the big damage dealer for his hero in these upcoming fights. So LGD sensing something's not right. Yao is going to TP out. Pasha was hunting for him, but evades the Scorpion, gets away to safety. Meanwhile, a lot of key ultimates about to come online. Echo Slam very close for 11. We see Ramsey's now playing the Chronosphere. The chase is on top as VP dive behind the tower. The double Big Bird strat goes in. Ame getting burrowed initially, but... The tornadoes are on cooldown, and now the turnaround comes. They want to catch him out, but Pasha somehow jukes this stun. They're going to need a batch here, and they do get it at the buzzer. Ame securing the kill. Meanwhile, as we saw on the big screen, Chronosphere permitted for the Earth Shaker kill. Trying to defend himself, but still not level 6 just yet, and uh, Shaker also goes down. So, fairly similar start for uh, VP as game 1. Might not be getting as much out of the lane stage, but LGD definitely very far behind right now. So, interesting choice by Lil here. You know, one thing that we have seen with a lot of the recent Chen picks is Eleven goes in on Ramses, keeps on hitting him with the totem, the fissure comes out, he's just not got the level 6 yet. Otherwise, I think that's actually a kill, but just a bit preemptive with the yeah. initiation. Uh, but yeah, the Chen is going Midas as well. So, you know, where the Chen picks in theory fall off a little bit, or even a lot later on, Lil is going to try to stay relevant. and. You know, some of the bu recent buffs this hero has gotten, I mean, you can talk about the more, it, a lot of them are around his late game. Yeah, especially with the talents. Well, we're going to see an initiation going on maybe on the mid lane here. They can't well miss, and as a result, Somnus is going to die. He's going to try to take down no one with him, but not enough damage. Victoria wrapping around. He sees two low HP heroes. Solo gets out as well. 
nobody dying. They just need that bit of follow-up. Love to see 11 there, but sadly his... Mid lane Gale happening off. again. Victorious pops a spike and just needs to TP out. This mid Venno is so threatening whenever he just lands a Gale on you. Forcing him out of the lane. Meanwhile, Pasha up top does get hit by the Axe. Zame looking for the bash, still not getting it. Will he continue pursuit on Pasha? Does burrow away to safety as Ramses worms his way through the trees. The Echo Slam finally online. And they do bring Maybe down for this. No Radiant Vision of this rotation, but Ramsey senses something's not right. Time walks back to safety. He should be out of there. They'll steal a small collection of creeps. But so meanwhile, VP are making their own move as they smoke up. The Chen is going to join here with the Ogre. And they're going to look to make this committed dive into the enemy woods. Oh, well, they're going to see this Troll Warlord farming in the woods. I'm in danger, perhaps. The Whirling Melee Axes are on cooldown. He might need that bit of evasion here to get out safely. And now getting slowed down, taking some decent nuke damage. Gets the Axes off again, but won't make it up to the high ground. Lil nukes him down. And catch anyone on the way back. Fissure trying to block people off. They just went for some Chen creeps. Don't feel like they kill any hero. LGD are just feeling very immobile right now. Yep. They seem a bit slow to react. They're with the Venno Gale coming out, often heroes can't get away. Meanwhile, VP, while they have some clunky heroes on paper, are making them feel rather nimble in practice. Gale hits on the mid lane again, and maybe just uses a very defensive stun to just get the Venno off of him. And gonna, again, he's going to be losing these raindrops soon. Yeah. Now the rotation comes in. VP looking for the flank. They just play. don't stop. Like they're bringing two cores to the mid lane, and the ward gets dropped out. That is going to cancel this out. But now, while well, Ame wants to chase no one, they're looking to oh, send the news from the rear. It's coming. Solo's coming in with the help of the creep army. Going to connect here. Maybe he tries to juke, but they get off the slow. Now the follow up clap can come through potentially. Stays out just out of range. Hadouken? The Hadouken does. Okay, raindrop does block it. Does it's block so it. Needs to get to the shrine quickly. There's going to be another one cooling down in a few seconds, but. I mean, they had two cores sitting mid during that time just to try and dodge the gank. They bring 11 towards top. LGD are just all over the place with these lanes, and they are getting punished for it in terms of farm. Yeah, LGD just feels like a plumber in, in, a, in a bad pipe in a bathroom. It's just like there's so many leaks, and they're just going everywhere to put out flames, and it's just not <laughs> What kind of uh, what well, kind of plumbing yeah. experiences have you had? <laughs> I'm a bad plumber. <laughs> You're seriously bad. Yeah. You've got flames coming out everywhere. I don't think it's quite that bad for LGD yet, but it might get there at this rate. Maybe he does have a haste rune. He definitely wants to get a solo kill, but the spidey senses of no one, he dodges away. Now, the conversation during the after the game one was that, from the panel, was that, you know, they need to play faster. LGD does. Do you think they have adapted? It definitely hasn't worked out that way in practice. I, I don't think Keeper Light is that type of year, but mid lane, Victoria looking to finally set up something, and they will get this key Venno kill, taking him down mid. Went for that Midas, so a bit squishier than Venno might be at this stage, and does get punished for it, but that said, he has already started using the Midas. The Chen Midas about to be picked up here as well, so even if VP are giving up deaths here and there, could still find some openings as Yao lurks behind the tower. They're trying to farm up 11's Blink Dagger. It's a critical juncture for LGD. Close to the Blink. Tons of AoE parked behind this tower. Do VP dare commit? Solo's going to wrap around it into the waiting arms of Yao, who's revving up the blast and following that through with the Enchantotem. He finishes it emphatically with a dunk. Good vision. They had this ward, and they just you know saw the, the Ogre Magi walking up on his own was able to pick up the kill. Very nicely done. How much pressure do you feel LGD are under, Lumi? There is a double Midas already completed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, a ton of pressure, to, to answer your question. And, you know, they can't really get out of the map as easily because there are Chen creeps everywhere. Venna wards are scouting out ganks left and right. And you can make the argument that Virtus Pro are scaling better to the late game as well, especially with that double Midas. That double Midas, especially with Venomancer's level 10 plus 30% experience talent, it's going to put him to level 25 so very quickly. Ame, Ame. force a TP out. Burst Strike will be here on time. Hesitated for just a second. He gets the bat, but not yep. enough damage pumped out there. Pasha scoring the kill in his own blink. Only 700 gold off. They are going to send Victoria roaming this way. Perhaps he can find no one who's trying to farm up from the safety of the high ground, but maybe looks to close the gap. It's another Victoria special coming in with the help of the Pulse Nova. They score the kill. Desperately needed momentum here from LGD. All of it coming from the Victoria engine. Yeah, you know, 
Day 9 has been really on, on the case of the, what is it, 80% win rate on Nyx Assassin? It was like, yeah, 79.8 yeah. something. And this is a game where we're seeing why he's actually doing so well. Think of a level 4, or sorry, a 4 position sanking. Ramses, he's been scouted out here. The blink's available. No he Echo Slam on 11. Auto? Yeah. I'm just going to retreat. So comparing it to a, a 4 position sanking to a four, 4 position Nyx, right? Even if you have a good laning stage with a sanking, you still need to farm for that blink dagger. And that means you're just off the map for like, you know, five, six minutes doing nothing for your team. But the difference is here, Nyx Assassin, as, turn as, as soon as he turns six, he just gets to walk around the map and start setting up kills. And as they say that here, Victoria invis up again. He's just waiting for Nine Posh to walk away from the tower vision. Can just look to carapace one of those caustic hits, potentially get this kill. So Pasha lurks back at the tower, suspicious that something is not right because Lashak has died enough that if he's sitting there, he likely does have health. Yeah, there's, there's no way that... Oh. By the way, this there. ward yeah. that LGD have top has been instrumental in stemming the bleeding. It has scouted at least four or five VP movement stop. That's what gave them the ogre kill earlier. They, they saw the ogre walking around. And it just dodged the void gank initially. It since dodged any sort of, you know, follow-up sticking around. Solo kind of rambled up that way. Lil was doing the same. That ward right now is the sixth man for LGD. Right. I mean, you normally don't ward there as a dire. It's such a defensive ward, but in this game, LGD knows that they're running at you nonstop, and that ward is probably one of the best in business to kind of stay alive. And again, Victoria, as soon as that invis is ready to go, he's going to probably pop it and, and just be on the map again. Smoke ain't coming out this time here from LGD. They, it's maybe again. They just keep on trying to punish the less track constantly. Being oh, pursued in the mid lane. Right Chronos there with the help of the double damage and Ramses can probably do the solo. Gale coming through. Poison Nova committed 11 there looking for the trade, but Ramses just walks it off. Now Victoria rumbling in, wants to get onto no one here. They're gonna need a stun. He connects on one, but Lil looking to salvage this fight. Follow up from Pasha if they engage forward. Ah, make it go down. It's just one to the next to the next here. Ramses jumping in. He is not going to be pushed away by a simple carapace. Now solo giving. A bit Major? of loving action. 11, though, backing away. Still has the Echo Slam. He's already used the Blink defensively, and then the Bash comes through. The Fissure from low ground. Oh, oh my gosh! Way. Ramses pulling out the Jukes, breaking ankles as he time walks over the Nyx stun, scores the kill. They just never had that crucial opening for 11 to turn the fight, Lumi. Too chaotic, too much of, you know, 3v1, 2v1. 1v1 type engagements, he just couldn't find a good Echo Slam. Yeah, Shaker is really good as a hero when the slows are, sl well, when the fights, excuse me, are slow and methodical. And this is the opposite of that. You know, it's just VP running at you, you don't have time to set up. And one of the conversations that the panel was also having is that Keeper of the Light is a hero that needs a little bit of time and a lot of farm to come online. Yao is getting no room to get that farm. Moving forward, this this bathroom is really looking like it's on fire. It's on fire. There's leaks everywhere. Yeah, it's it's just not looking good for LGD right now. What is the you know strategy at this point for LGD? Like, how do you see their overall game plan? Are they a five-man pushing lineup? Are they a turtle farm lineup? Are they trying to sneak a Roshan? Like, what are some of the key points as far as how they get back in the game strategy-wise? They're not actually down really at all in the net worth department, but it does feel like all the momentum is VPs right now. Right, they're not down, like, economically-wise right now, but, you know, double Midas is one thing. The heroes that scale so well in Virtus Pro is another. Um, but to answer your question, LGD, they are definitely a slow down and farm. Dodge ganks, get off pickoffs on your own with your Shaker as well as Nyx Assassin. Get that Bloodstone online on the Nick, uh, Lashrak. You know, Lashrak with the Bloodstone, once you get going, you get a ton of kills. He can be a, a big, big factor in these kind of mid and late game team fights. Better to have the deaths now before the Bloodstone comes out and maybe... That's one way to think of it. Is yeah. close. Yeah. Now that said, Lashrak is not the escape artist that many other Bloodstone carriers are, like Storm Spirit, for example. Right, but and, and here's the thing, you know, it's something I, I brought up earlier and what we just witnessed in the, the save, last fight. Right. That no save. No Oracle in this lineup as we do see the initiation into the jungle. Nyx Assassin does get off the nice spike against three, but we'll go down. And that invites uh, the push on the mid lane. The, the tower is going to get uh, killed pretty easily. Low on mana here on Ramses, though, so doesn't seem to matter. He is unfazed as he muscles down the tier one mid. Yep. The Midas is slowly kicking in for VP, more so in experience than in gold. At least for now, but still waiting to see when that next offensive will come from LGD. They just constantly seem to be reacting to VP's movements, warding defensively, getting ganked under their towers, just 
biding their time as finally we'll, we'll see some recall action here. I like this. Yeah, could bring in 11, and this could be an begin. opening. Yeah, blink Echo Slam to start the fight, but... Again, Pasha would be Pasha. a big kill. He shows himself with Sandstorm. Could be the opening. 11 plunging in. Oh, oh. The hesitation. Oh, 11 didn't want to use his Echo Slam, but I think he wanted to go for the Fissure, like the Enchant Totem Fissure kill. Right. And save the Echo for a follow up. Oh, this is no the time greed, to save, man. Creator hesitation, whatever it was. Yeah, just awesome go. there. Well, easy for us to say, but maybe he felt like he needed to take the risk. I do want to point out the, the nice bit of synergy here. The, the panel does mention you know, the Bloodlust helping the faces void quite a bit early on. Just with simply the Mask of Madness as well as Bloodlust, he, he fights really, really well. And Chen has also gotten a, a Frost Ogre Creep. Could put the Frost Armor to take away the disadvantage of that Mask of Madness as well. He becomes a kind of a pretty sick carry at this point just with uh, the help of his allies. Pretty nice. This Siege is risky business for LGD. There is so much Counter initiation available for VP. Pasha lurking in the trees with the blink. Epicenter at the ready. Not to mention the void that you talked about uh, and the potential bonus damage he could bring to bear. As we will see LGD get nervous. They back away. Pasha being off the map is doing wonders for VP this game in terms of scaring the bejesus out of LGD. So Chen is uh, close to finishing that Aghanim Scepter really, really soon. I didn't think we are going to see an Axe Chen a, a TI, but... We're going to see a lot more than that at this yeah. rate. We're going to see, you know, big creeps being dominated. What's uh, what's your favorite one here that you think will, will help out VP? I mean, the, the plus HP is always huge. Yeah, plus HP is great. From the, the Rock Golem. I wonder if we're going to see some uh, some of the newer ones. What's your what's your personal favorite? Oh, I like my Black Dragon, you know? you got to rain and fire over kids. Setting up on the bottom lane. They want to make the go on Pasha at the same time that Lil is trying to TP out. He gets caught. The Sand King might die as well. Very low. 11. Not quite able to finish him off and did commit the Echo for that. Yep. I'm not sure whether they changed Sun Echo into Illuminate into Fissure. Um, if you had all of that, it should be a kill, but I, I did not see how that fight broke out. I believe he interrupted a little bit with the Burrow Strike away, but... In any case, not able to finish him off. Good news for LGD though, they get that first Bloodstone charge for maybe. And now maybe can take this tier one down as well. But the TP reaction coming in from Pasha. Wants to try and hold the line here. Is he gonna let that channel epicenter? Thinking about it. I don't think he can solo kill maybe though at 1800 health. He'll certainly need backup. As VP start to posture near the Rosham pit. TP coming in to the south side from that void, and no one gets scouted out here. Actually, Victoria as well. He is forced to carapace the push away from 11. Chrono Sphere. on forward. He catches out two. They need the fall of damage. Bring in the Poison Nova. It will start quickly bringing down the Nyx Assassin. Tries for the stun. Down he goes. Decisive play from Ramses there. VP grab two. Ramses has a double damage rune. That really made short work of uh, two heroes with a Chrono. Very nicely done. Just before that kill, I was going to say, look, this is exactly the pacing LGD wants to, to have. You know, just a very slow game. You set up a gank with a Shaker, you set up another with a Nyx, and then you just let your, your Bloodstone uh, Lashrak to be there to soak up all of those kills. But VP answers back very quickly. And we are getting to a point where all of these kind of farming items that VP has purchased is about to, you know, sink in. The Ramsey's Lincolns is about to be finished, so he will really start to hit hard and start to build damage without worry. Uh, the Midas has been running for a long time now. Dragon, sorry, Hurricane Pike being finished on, on no one. And of course, the Aghanim Scepter I talked about on Chen is very, very close to being finished. I think VP will give it five more minutes or so, and then the pressure is back on. Yeah, they're definitely going to hit a huge power spike with that round of items that you talked about. And LGD tried to prevent them from getting to that point. They move in with 11, Echo Slam in oh. one second. They break the smoke. They find Ramses to start the fight. Huge takedown if they can get it, get pushed away. But what here a force comes up. Pasha! Almost finishes off three. Ends up dying, but will bail out his faceless voice. Victoria is low. Brought down so much poison damage. Also, maybe now getting caught out. They finally commit the Echo. Four step the again! Four step gaming pulls them out again. LGD have to run. No one playing out of his mind. That initial four staff was his. Pushing the Void away from a certain death. That was a perfect chain sign coming out from LGD. I think Victoria perhaps hesitated just a slight second. And again, got just punished for it. The secondary four staff, just as good. God, that epicenter was huge as well. Breaks up the chain of initiation. Triple hero stun. Then they get the Venomancer. 
damage ticking in the whole while, and nobody can fight at that point. Like, once yep. VP just dropped that stuff, Lumi, that was a fight without Poison Nova, a fight without Chronosphere, and I would say VP still won that fight. Yeah, for sure. We're going to watch it one more time. The smoke breaks from, and they react so quickly. Venomancer pushes them away. Look at the, the hesitation on Nyx, and then the Sand King comes in. Good thing, I guess, silver lining here is that the Lashrak did die relatively early into the fight, giving the rest of the team a big heal with his Bloodstone. Meanwhile, in the in the woods here, Solo, driving Yao away as a Roshan. Then I get claim here by Virtus Pro. VP, the numbers might say they're only slightly ahead, but the momentum has been consistently theirs. At 23 minutes, towers are falling. They went for the greedy double Midas. They've made it work for them as they first ensured that they were winning these lanes before they grabbed it. And now, their team fight just continues to ramp up, heading later into the game. Lil has his Aghanim Scepter online, so those Bigger creeps are available to buff up the army, to buff up the five man. You've got the blood. Sanking links in mid lane, in. burrow strike. They get the Venom on the back line. Eleven in a lot of trouble. No force staff to get him out of there. He's gonna spend his gold. He thinks he'll die. He's gonna farm a little bit more. Buy some recipe before he dies. Alright, not too bad here for a shaker. You say not too bad, I say another death. Oh. LGD constantly on the back point and Ramsey's I'm looking for more. Here come the bashes. There goes the kill. Again, VP, every gank is a success. Now they TP in Ramsey's bottom. He, with the Aegis, he's unafraid, and they can't even take this tower. Three heroes from VP marshalling the defense. Victoria will grab a bounty run. He's stalking Pasha, but doesn't really seem like he wants to go for a kill. And who do you go on as an Ix? Lil's got an Aghanim Scepter. The Ogre's naturally extremely tanky. There's just not any easy pickoffs at this stage, Lumi. I don't think uh, there are pickoffs anymore because the way that VP is going to play now is the Chen game. We're going to group up and send five at you. Nyx Assassin, very good when you're kind of finding one or two in the jungle. You set up a gank for your team, but that is not the playstyle that Virtus Pro will, uh, will have for the remainder of the game. So with this Aegis, if you're in VP's shoes, any sense of urgency, any particular objectives that your eyes are on? Or? You wait for your Chronosphere to be back online. You either go for a smoke or a frontal push. Either way, it's fine. I think Virtus Pro is ahead enough where they can do a frontal push, and LGD cannot repel. Of course, if you just get a smoke gank and it works, that would also be great. Big, LGD. Oppor big opportunity for LGD. They actually wait. They let VP get back to their tower. They see Ramses. They know what's behind him, or at least have an idea of it. They're looking for this flank, but they've smoke been breaks. hesitant this game. We saw it earlier. With 11 not dropping the Echo immediately, we're even seeing it now where they try to find that perfect opening, and well they do. Chen going down early in the fight, but at the same time a three hero burrow. Chrono Asha can come not back it. with the Epi into the Chrono. Still 30 seconds though, so Ramses won't have it yet. Gets the bashes, scores the kill, shaker down. LGD now on the run, and this is where things can get ugly as Pasha continues to try to find that opening. Still waiting, still waiting. Gets the burrow, that's two. About to be a third, the bashes come through. VP routing LGD. Indecision is the name of the game for them. They have to be decisive. They have to see the Void. They have to go in and kill the Void. There is just no other way. This Void is dealing so much damage. He and it's an, hard. It's hard. He has because, an Aegis. Yeah, it, it, he has an Aegis. He has the Chen Hand of God. He has defensive force staff on his team. There's so many saves on the side of Virtus Pro. And unfortunately, LGD can't say the same for, for their own heroes. And it's like you mentioned earlier, you know, it's 1k goal lead, 2k goal lead, but to me this game is... For LGD, they're so far behind. It's rapidly getting out of hand. And then you, you just look at some of the matchups heading later, like, we'll, we'll take another look at this fight first, see how it unfolded, where they committed everything for a Chen, got caught by a quick 3-hero burrow, second time that Pasha has managed to counter-initiate and interrupt LGD. Again, they're fighting in between a Shrine and a Tier 2. Uh, and a tier one in the mid lane. So there's so many ways for VP to cut them off and you know rejoin this fight, even if they weren't already in position. And you can just see the patience of Pasha waiting, not just for that first kill or the second kill, but looking for the follow-ups as well. But back to the action where Victoria is in the back lines as they have caught out old 11 in the trees. Pasha pursuing him out. The Shaker's in danger. Oh, he's gone. Tries to make it away, but where are you going? Where are you going, my friend? Echo Slam available. The Burrow comes through. They're kiting him. They control him nicely, and they score another kill, and now Triceratops coming into play as the Ancient Thunderhides also join the squad. VP on the warpath. No signs of a slowdown. Yeah, they're going to just up and look to finish the game. 
What is your defense, LGD? Shaker dead for 30 seconds. Does have Echo Slam, but 30 seconds with this Void hitting your buildings. Burrow Strike coming through on the back line. They see Yao. Yao's gone. This Void is massive with the, not only the Mask of Madness, the Bloodlux, he's also got the Frenzy from the Ancient Thunder Heights. Look at making it hit like a truck right now as he chews through the Mailer X. It feels like Ramses is already into the late game. How can LGD answer? Their base is crumbling. VP take one lane. They're looking for the they second. They can go mid. Are they going to give them they the respect to the Shaker? Back away here. Will Victoria try to pursue? Oh, it looks like they get out safely, at least for now. As a team, they stagger back. Oh, they see maybe. Looking for the flank, gets caught out. He's forced to throw that. Yule's out defensively. Link? No. Decent get stun it from the Knicks. They need the Echo Slam, though. They need the Shaker, and he's in the base. Why is maybe out so far? LGD are not playing as a team. It's what got them to this point. But it won't get them any further because they're dying one by one. Now 11's turn. Caught out by Ramses. Getting pummeled by the Hammerhead Sharkman. It chases forward on Yao. They keep on spamming the chat wheel. Charging after buildings. VP, head full of steam. Second lane of Rax is theirs. The series is theirs. They have slain LGD. They made it look easy. This time, you know, they, they got off the, the fast start as they always do, and then scaled it back, patience with double Midas. And then as soon as they got enough items for that push, the game was over. I think as we look at VP and where they might go in this tournament, Lumi, we can't question their drafts anymore. They made the Crystal Maiden work, they made the Chen work, and they didn't just happen to win with those heroes. Those heroes were integral in the strategy in both games. Now let's, before we give too much credit to Virtus Pro, I felt like LGD didn't respond well. You know, Pano says we need to speed up the game. We need to make sure that we don't get run over, but they just got ran over. They absolutely did. We'll see the team shaking hands here now. So of course, uh, LGD not out of it yet. They're gonna drop down to the lower bracket and they'll have a shot in the BO3s there, but VP feeling it now. They've definitely had a strong cheering section behind the Russian commentators. And I have to say, Vlad, he was on his feet. He was really <laughs> excited for that performance. So VP now the last Western hope in the upper bracket, but still tons of stiff competition ahead. And LFY perhaps will have a shot to avenge their brothers from LGD. Yeah, I mean, you talk about Western hope. This is supposed to be the, the odd year where, where you know a Western Dota team is going to win TI. But right now, three teams from China in the upper bracket. How do you feel about the chances of uh, West versus East? I mean, I think all of these teams have their own unique styles and way of playing. I mean, for, for me, LFY has really excelled because of Inflames, the way he stepped up, and as well as their creativity with their picks. Like, they, they are playing extremely well in the teamwork department. I think you look at Newbie, they have a much more clearly defined style where they like to go for five man. You can see all smiles, all giggles, as they regroup with the manager. Yeah. Guaranteed top six for Virtus Pro. Guaranteed top six, guaranteed a million dollars in the bank. What a fantastic performance. So how do you rate VP now? We've seen all the upper bracket matches. Are they are they the top team coming into those those final four in the, the top half? Or? I think they're the most dangerous team. They're very unpredictable when it comes to the draft. They don't make a lot of mistakes. You know, th there were some instances where they died behind the tower. It's like, oh, this is the OCIS. But the OCIS, you know, they make mistakes under the tower and then they throw away their lead, but they don't make any mistakes. They go in under a tower, they kill you under a tower, and they just make you look silly. And then they calmly begin to take their next objective. Yeah. You know, like as much as the stereotype for CIS Dota, a little bit for Southeast Asian Dota historically was, oh, they just like to run at you too much, overextend. BP, they were patient, they were polished, they might, the draft might have looked a little crazy, but they had a game plan and they make it work. And now to break it down further, it's back to our panel. Thank you, gentlemen. I mean, VP played amazingly as a team. And in fact, we were all watching together and had to hurriedly run out here because at the end, I mean, LGD almost seemed disorganized and scattered. That was a quick 2-0. Yeah. Pretty impressive games from VP. And of course, I'd like to welcome our brand new panelist up here, Pai Lai Dai. How's it going, man? It's all right. Got knocked out, but I'm happy to be here. Yeah, what, what in your eyes was the big highlight of the series between VP? Uh, and LGD. I didn't quite catch the first game, but you know, I, I looked at the drafts for the second game, and I was like, "Whoa, uh, I don't know what uh, like this VP draft. What is this supposed to do?" <laughs> and then pop like three smokes in ten minutes, keep running at them. It doesn't like even work out. I like look away for five minutes, and then 
I'm running out here? Yeah, no, I remember, like, you know, you came in, and, of course, everyone has to get made up, you know, before we wind up coming out. So doing makeup, and every time you looked away, literally there was, like, huge chronos, huge pickoffs. I mean, Ramsey's was just beautiful on that faceless void. I mean, Pie Cat, also welcome. It's the first time we get to panel together. We were enjoying the games Thank on the you. couch. We were. It was It was a... It was an interesting game. It was. It looked for a moment like uh, LGD had a good chance. They were yeah. kind of getting some farm on a lot of heroes. The Shaker had a good start, but then they never really got the jump that they needed. The Shaker, he he had a good start, but he didn't really manage to do anything with it, and they kept losing fights because of that. Who had the four staff that just kept doing the insane clutch forces? I don't I know. I think they had a couple of four staffs. Yeah, I think there was, I mean, there's a Hurricane Pike on the Venomancer, and then there was also a four staff on the Sand King. And we saw in the near the Radiant Ancients, we saw Sand King really yeah. bring out the void. And they just kept keeping Ramsey alive. And then he would time, time leap away and get all his HP back. And yeah. they really wanted to kill him, but he couldn't. And that's another win for uh, one position void. Seeming yeah. to be picking up some popularity. Yeah, position one void, hard carry void, has been increasingly popular in this event. It's been really exciting to see him shine. And, of course, to break down in more in-depth analysis, we have good old Coach Purge, man. Let us know what's up, Kevin. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, going to look a little bit about uh, what VP ended up doing with this game. Now, when we saw the end of the draft, it looked very heavily like they were going to be going with uh, mostly push-level stuff because of the Venno pick. They had Venno, they had Chen. They had uh, faces void for some team fight and Ogre Magi to amp, but it made things look a little bit weird. But if we take a look at how their lanes matched up, it was very much about these 2v2 lanes that produced less than ideal results out of LGD's heroes. The only hero that they really let get a lot was really just Earthshaker down here versus the faces void. And as we saw, he didn't really have the best game uh, both of the two games, so maybe they undervalue his performance a bit. But if we take a look at what Chen ended up accomplishing, started off, got a Dark Troll Warlord, he turned that almost instantly into a kill in the offlane. Slightly lucky on the Coddle kill, but V VP's goal here was let's limit the what the Caudal can do to zone the Sand King. And Caudal is very good at pressuring offlane heroes, but he's very poor at being pressured himself. He's fast, but his survivability is low. So that kind of pressure was really helpful in the offlane. And later, just sending tornado creeps in the safe lane, the Troll Warlord is forced to be other places. And even though uh, Lil did end up dying here, it still forces the mid hero to come over, the, uh, the other support to do something. And even in the meantime, um, the Troll Warlord just didn't have very good, much, uh, very good farm. Um, their other dual lane was the Ogre Magi plus the uh, Venomancer one. I thought the really interesting thing about this wasn't necessarily the level one portion. This was one, uh, one minute into the game where they were forced to deny him. They pressured him very well, but the interesting thing was the skills, I believe, that uh, no one ended up going for a max Gale build. Now, normally, Venomancer is going to grab a lot of wards, and he does that to make sure that he gets lots of last hits, denies, things like that, is able to zone his opponent, push the lane. But by going for Gale, with three points here, he does 425 magic damage, which is way above a normal nuke. Level four does, I believe, 600 magic damage, which is amazing. So pretty much any time that he gales somebody, they're going to have to leave the lane. And that's the best way to guarantee last hits sometimes over something like poison attack. So it really felt like VP grabbed these dual lanes that really shut down what LGD wanted to do. And it pushed them into this pretty good place with the Midas's that allowed them to abuse their team fight advantage. It was really cool, especially to see the use of Chen. I mean, you've talked so much about how Chen can do awesome level one ganks. It was a real treat to see it in this game. And also Midas on Chen, keeping him relevant as the game continued to go on. I mean... I want to ask you, PPD, because I know you don't like Troll Warlord. I know you're not a fan. Do you feel like this game sort of highlights some of his weaknesses? Uh, I don't think he's the greatest laner, especially up against that Sand King. Um, he could present some problems. Troll really wants to get in there and see us as a melee um, most times. But mm, the biggest thing for me was like the Chen and actually finding usefulness in the offlane, getting that kill on the Caudal and enabling him to have presence in the offlane. I felt like LGD should have been more prepared for that rotation. Be maybe smoking at level zero and placing yeah. a ward somewhere to just to keep track of the Chen and see what's going on because that was the only way for Lil to get into that game and they allowed him to do that. I mean, incredible coordination from Team VP. They will be, of course, as we said before, advancing on to the winner's semifinals. They're in top six. And to talk a little bit to VP, we got Casey. Hey, guys. Yeah, we've got Lil. Congratulations. Thanks. You guys came out decisively in both games, and you seem to play best as a team when you're able to be confident and bold. Why do you think that played especially well against LGD today? I think because we made some decisions after group stage, and we talked a lot with each other, and um, now we, we know what are our weak uh, sides, and uh, we fixed them, and now we're very confident in ourselves, and we can play VP Dota. 
You came out of a really strong group, Group B, dominating on the main stage, coming out of group. But LFY did best you to nothing, so in the group stage, that is. So do you think you need to change your style of play when you get ready to face them? Or, or is it the kind of thing where you're on a roll now, let's just keep doing what we're doing? Yeah, I think we should just keep doing what we are doing <laughs> because uh, it works. Why do you? Why is it so fun for you to play in that fashion? Because it's obvious you get a kick out of it, out of picking heroes that really enable you to be aggressive and bold. I, I don't know. <laughs> it just it just works like we we are playing uh, very aggressive Dota mm -hmm. and uh, Chinese teams can't play uh, with that because uh, they are play, playing slowly and uh, that's why it's uh, very hard for them to like uh, to play versus us. How confident are you that we'll be seeing you in the grand finals? Uh, it will be just the same. We will just smash all our opponents every game and uh, yeah. Sounds like you think we'll be talking to you guys soon again, huh? Yeah, sure. All right. <laughs> Very confident. I like it. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks so much. We'll send it back to you guys. Extraordinary confidence out of VP. Love that. They can't deal with our aggressive play. Player with some gut. Everyone he, gets up there and goes, oh, like, really sure. Yeah, we just, yeah. Did our, we just did our best, and our opponents played great, know, yes. too. But I'm just happy we won. I, I, I love that. No, we're just going to gonna smash them. We're just going to break through them again and again like it's nothing. Snap them like twigs. I don't know though. Like he's uh, the Chinese play slow. I I don't. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> like the Chinese actually play really fast. But like if you're picking Ogre, Sanking, Shen, like you're. That's why I'm looking at their lineup and I'm like, oh, like how are they gonna do this? Like you have to play so fast, and that's why they like you know they yeah. help so many smokes. So, <laughs> yeah. like I, I wish them good luck for Zelda I feel like yeah. Like that draft, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, because but, they, but they're playing so well. So. I mean, you're I referring to things like the fact that Ogre in late game just kind of sits there and is like. Good luck, you're bloodlusted. Good luck, you're bloodlusted. I'm going to chill back here, guys. Good luck to everyone. Doesn't scale as well. It's kind of that way. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you have Casey probably played some ogre, right? Yeah, o ogres, whatever. I think Casey was trying to get at Lil and, and was asking him, you know, you play this like aggressive four and you roam all the time and you find these kills and they go, oh, what makes you, you know, why do you like playing like that? I, th I think he just likes to win. Right? Like, he likes to play fast, he likes to roam, he likes to, yeah. that's what he's good at, and VP's done a great job at that, and they've won a lot of games because of his presence on the map. Yeah, I want to come back to something that uh, Ake said in an earlier segment, that this tournament is really about position four. Position four typically tends to be the player that is roaming around, not fixed to a lane, not staying there trying to get last hits, and is instead trying to capitalize on opponents being out of position and pick them off. And Pycat, what's your thoughts on the the story of this tournament is the position four. Yeah, we also talked a bit about that during group stage. Um, I think Blitz said the same thing, and, and we all were kind of in agreement that position four, like Dota has become, like it has evolved so much to the point where yeah. early game is so important nowadays because teams are just, they're really good at not letting go of advantages. So when you get this position four player who can kind of get you ahead in the game, it's it's so crucial. You know, you can kind of just, you can, you can keep that advantage nowadays. Yeah, it gives you options. Yeah, and so in the past, it was a lot on core players, but now we see this, like this position four player and maybe to some extent the three, but the supports, mm -hmm. mainly the four, they kind of create your early game or you, that's what you want them to do. And I mean, Lil is one of those type of players who does stuff yeah. like that. And at this point, if we take a look at the brackets, we now see that up in winners, it's IG versus Newbie, two teams that were an absolute treat to watch yesterday. And here we also see today LFY and VP advancing through. I mean, Chinese Dota is on fire right now. All their players are doing so well. Only VP, the single non-Chinese team in the winner's semis. And of course, coming up next is a matchup we've been so pumped for. It's gonna be Team Secret versus Team Liquid. And of course, the captains used to be on the same team. Coming out first, it's going to be Team Liquid.